Hi, all. Chester from Langchain here today to demo a data extraction application that we just started uh, hosting. Um, so Langchain has recently been improving its support for the data extraction use case. So we help developers uh, work with a, a wide variety of file formats, um, schema formats, uh, methods for uh, extraction, such as uh, tool and function calling, JSON mode, prompting and parsing, um, et cetera, and, and also support for, for few shot examples. Um, and we actually uh, recently released a reference application that sort of puts these things together. Uh, it's in, in this repo up here. Um, uh, so this lets you define uh, sort of your own extractors with custom uh, schema and, and instructions. You can persist them. Um, it uses, uh, you can add few shot examples. It uses technologies we like, uh, such as uh, Postgres and FastAPI and, and, and Linkser. Um, so we've recently added some new features and put up a front end for it. Uh, so I wanted to show it to you today. Um, so it's at extract.langchang.com. Um, I'm going to extract from uh, two things today. Uh, the first is a uh, recipe book. Um, so we have this recipe book from the uh, National Institutes of Health. Uh, we have, I just trimmed it down to two recipes. We have linguine with clam sauce and cauliflower with whole wheat uh, breadcrumbs. Um, and then after that, we're going to do uh, some an example from uh, some, some financial data. Um, OK, so let's go. So we can uh, first define an extractor. So I'm over at the, the sort of new uh, part here. Um, and we can either um, uh, specify the JSON schema, but this, this can be hard to do. So instead, it lets you just uh, enter in a description of the extractor in, in natural language. So maybe I'm interested in recipes. So I can say recipes, each recipe has a name and list of ingredients. Ingredients that have a name, numeric amount, and unit of amount. OK, so we hit Enter. Uh, what this will do is translate uh, this description into some, some JSON schema, um, which we can then inspect. Uh, so we have a name, list of ingredients. This looks, this looks reasonable. OK, so then we hit Create. Um, so now we can choose the we can choose which model we use, uh, and we can um, choose the file to extract over. So I'll use uh, GPT four for this. Um, upload the uh, recipe book and hit run, and let's see what comes out. So this might take a little bit longer just because we're using a somewhat larger model. OK, so we have two recipes here, linguine with clam sauce, cauliflower with whole wheat breadcrumbs. Uh, and this looks, this looks reasonable. Um, so we have the two recipes and their ingredients. Um, interestingly, if you look at the, here, it, it pulls out 0.125 teaspoons of ground black uh, pepper. Um, and you can see here, so that's translated that from 1 8 teaspoon. Um, so this looks correct. Uh, one last thing here is um, that you can actually just, instead of uh, extracting from a file. Um, so I can deselect the file and just type in this text box if I wanted to to, to test things out. So I can say uh, orange juice has an orange and three ice cubes. And so it, it's done something um, with, with this. OK, um, last thing on the front end is that you can actually uh, share these um, with people. So you can. Uh, hit the share. This will give you a, a shareable link, um, so uh, other people can can try it out. Um, okay, so that's the front end. Uh, now I want to show you a little bit of what the back end looks like. Um, so I'm going to run it locally. Um, you can actually uh, do the same. We have some instructions just on this reference application, um, so it should be pretty easy to uh, to to start up. Um, so use yeah Docker Compose build up. So I've already run build, so we can just Docker Compose up, um, and it should start up pretty quickly. OK, um, so I just want to walk you through a little bit what it's like to, to use the API. So here I'm going to be extracting from uh, the transcript of an earnings call, uh, and I'm going to use uh, Uber's prepared for remarks from its Q4 2023 uh, uh, earnings call. So this is a transcript. Um, these are interesting because they're in natural language, but they contain these little factoids like uh, 1.3 billion in adjusted EBITDA uh, and so on. So I thought this was kind of a good candidate um, to, to look at. Okay, 
Um, so we, I'm running it locally, so I run off localhost. Um, first, we just grab the PDF, so Uber Investor Relations uh, host these online um, freely for, for people to use. Um, we next define our schema. Um, so here you can uh, represent this as a Pydantic class. And so we have maybe some financial data. We have a name of the figure like revenue, numeric value, a scale like uh, millions, billions, and, and so on, uh, and maybe a time period, uh, which I can represent with the start of the period and the duration in months or something. Um, we also include this evidence field, uh, which we say is a verbatim sentence of text where the figure was found. Um, so uh, this will help us just to inspect the results and, and make sure that, that they're reasonable. Um, OK, so this the first thing we do is we define our extractor. So we give it some, some instructions, and then we post it to this endpoint. OK, so this gives us uh, an extractor with its own ID. Um, and now we can run uh, the document through our extractor. So I'm going to run this, this transcript through. Um, so we, we encode the PDF bytes. Um, and let's see what comes out. OK, so we have some uh, records here, which look pretty reasonable. So we have adjusted EBITDA of uh, 1,300 million. And here we have the um, sort of evidence. So this is the model's construction of uh, the sentence of text where it was found, so 1.3 billion here. Um, this looks reasonable. Interestingly, uh, we did suggest to the model that it should encode the scale as millions or, or billions or, or so on using these abbreviations, um, which it did not do. Um, so different models will struggle with this to varying degrees. Um, but before reaching for a larger model, uh, maybe, uh, we can actually make progress just by providing some few shot examples and letting the model do some in-context learning. Um, so I've prepared some here. This is just uh, one example with two records. Uh, so we say revenue is 1 million, EBIT was 2 million. And we just uh, kind of um, uh, tell it to use the, uh, use the abbreviations and maybe format the, the names as lowercase. OK, so in this cell, I, I post them to the examples endpoint. Um, so this goes fast. You can. Uh, uh, also delete or, or get uh, examples uh, using the, the relevant request type. Um, so now we will run the extraction again. And uh, the output should be closer a little bit to our intended format um, here. So sure enough, it uses uh, millions and, and billions and so on uh, here. Uh, OK, so the last thing I wanted to uh, show you is uh, sort of LangServe. So because we implemented the core extraction logic uh, as a LangServe endpoint, we can use the um, LangServe client like this remote runnable. Um, so here we just actually point it at the URL. Um, and this gives us runnable with the usual LangChain methods like uh, invoke and, and so on. So we can invoke it and get some, some data out. And what's kind of fun about this is that we can plug it into uh, larger agent workflows and, and chains and, and other applications. So uh, here I've done just a, a tiny example. Um, so uh, maybe I've indexed uh, several documents or, or chunks of documents here. So these are just toy documents. And maybe I can uh, reframe the problem as a retrieval problem. So I can search for the string rev. It will search among these documents. Um, and you can see it just plugs in rev into the retriever, gets the top document, and then runs the extraction on this. So our, our whole API is just represented with this, this little runnable here. And you can see where it lives in the, the sort of broader um, runnable. So uh, if I run this, this will give us um, the same result, sort of what we expect in this case. Um, so that's all I had today. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Would love your feedback um, on this. Uh, would love contributions to the reference application as well. So please let us know what you think. Feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.